Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy Father, at the appointed time, you sent your only begotten Son. Through his death and resurrection, he gave us life and poured out the Holy Spirit upon us. The Spirit of adoption, through whom we call you our Father. With his joy and holiness, make us worthy to celebrate this Pentecost Sunday the feast of the descent of your Holy Spirit upon the pure disciples in the upper room. And we thank you, your only Son and your only Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who has no beginning and who is the origin of all fatherhood in heaven and on the earth and to his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word, the wisdom, and the might of the Father and to the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the source of divine gifts, the living one who gives life to all. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. the Spirit, the Paraclete, in former times you spoke through the prophets, and in latter times through the apostles. You sanctify churches and make perfect the divine services. You confer the priesthood and complete baptism. You exalt the mysteries and forgive sins. You are the Spirit who delves into the depths of the Father, the Spirit who makes us children of God, the Spirit of truth, of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Now, O Holy Spirit, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense and ask you to renew your divine gifts in us. Descend upon us as you descended upon the holy apostles in the upper room. Fill us with the wisdom of your teachings. Make us temples worthy of your dignity. Quench our thirst with your grace. Enrich us with the knowledge of your mysteries. Illumine us with your light. May we live for you and worship you with purity and with holiness. We raise glory to you, through you, to the Father who is hidden and unseen, and to the Son who is adored, worshipped forever.
Consoler, you descended in the form of tongues of fire upon the holy apostles and filled them with the divine gifts. Receive our incense and in your grace fill us with strength, wisdom, and holiness. Show us the riches of your heavenly gifts that you bestow upon each one of us according to our worthiness. We raise glory and thanks to you, to the Father and to his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. This day sent his spirit who came to the upper room. Joel the prophet had seen him who has come in tongues of fire. Acts of the Apostles. Glory to the Lord, Paul, and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and the children forever. Brothers and sisters, when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. <clears throat> At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, 
Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in our own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Lygra and, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them in our own languages, own tongues, of the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to one another, what does this mean? But others said, scoffing, they have had too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and proclaimed to them, you who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. These people are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. It will come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour out a portion of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Indeed, upon my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out a portion of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will work wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and a cloud of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and splendid day of the Lord. And it shall be that everyone shall be saved who calls the name of the Lord. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Alleluia. In these days, those days, I will pour out my spirit upon you. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John who proclaimed life unto the world let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls The Lord Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another paraclete to be with you always, 
the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and shall be in you. I shall not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world shall no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you shall live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in the, my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. This is the truth, peace be with you. But you will see me because I live and you will live. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, it's kind of an intriguing thing over these last few decades. We've had a real obsession with the end of the world, with the apocalypse, and with zombies. So this whole aspect is rather strange because it's always looking for something in the future, and in this case, which is quite dystopic, and yet, among Christians, we often think ourselves of our Lord's presence and the end of the world, what in Greek we call the eschaton. And we think about it as something that's going to take place way in the future, or perhaps shortly in the future, but always in the future. It's always someplace else, always in another time. And the important thing is we've, we've certainly, we've kind of lost the vision of what the eschaton really is. St. Paul says that we already live in the last days. We live in the last day. This reality of the transformation of all things in Christ, what we speak about as being the end of time. Time will end at some point, that's for sure. But the eschaton is actually something that is beginning now, by the tongues of fire, by Pentecost, by the transformation. Our Lord says, I will leave you, but I will come to you. I will not leave you orphans. And this beautiful line when he says, and you shall see me because I live, and you shall live. This is a question that's radi radically rooted within the faith, the vision of how we see the world today within our lives, within the people around us, within our families. This is the eschaton. This is living in the last day. It's not a question of waiting for something to happen at some point in the future. This is a judgment and a mercy and an appearance and an epiphany and an apocalypse all simultaneously, but it begins with Pentecost. This is the kingdom. You know, in our Maronite tradition, we're always talking about the kingdom. But the kingdom is the revelation of God, quite simply. That's all it is fundamentally. And the revelation of God comes when the moment of grace enters into our lives and we respond to it. This is why I live and you will live because you see me, you recognize me. You see this beautiful Trinitarian aspect of the presence of Christ within us. The kingdom is presence. The kingdom is, because it's presence, the kingdom is transformative. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And therefore, if you don't keep the commandments, you don't love me no matter what you say. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that's why our Lord leads. This whole section is actually from the Last Supper. It's our Lord's last will and testament. It's our Lord speaking just hours before his death. If you love me, you will do as I teach. You will do as I command. And my Father will love you. And he will send another to you. This whole Trinitarian aspect who is the paraclete, the paracletos, this support, 
this advocate. And our Lord actually calls him another paraclete in another part of this, his teaching. Because he himself is already the first paraclete that comes to us. He is the first one to strengthen us, to encourage us, to transform us and move us towards the Father. The Father always remains unseen. The only thing that will be different in the eschaton is you will begin to see the Father. Otherwise, the transformation of the paracletes, of our Lord, I will not leave you all orphans, I will come to you. Or of the other paraclete, the spirit of truth, that God himself comes and he will transform you. But that transformation takes place now. We don't wait for the resurrection and the transformation of our lives at some point in the future. It's something that's beginning now. The resurrection of our bodies from the dead, of course, will be a historical moment in the future. But the transformation of us right now, moving towards that resurrection, is taking place today. And we've so often lost that vision. The tongues of fire that come down on Pentecost. These aren't candles. They're not flashlights. The fire that comes down in Pentecost is the beginning of a process of transformation. Always remembering that in our Eastern traditions, the whole path of salvation is progressive. It's a movement into something deeper and deeper and deeper. Which is why in the history of the world, once an individual is transformed, that means it changes the way I think, the way I see, the way I judge, and therefore it changes the way I act. Which is why our Lord says, if you love me, if my love is in you, if you truly love me, you will follow my commandments because you will see differently, you will judge differently, you will act differently. You will act according to the teaching that is given to you of this fire. So the eschaton is something that takes place now. That's why you see in the central of the apostles, in the Acts of the Apostles, we see Our Lady present in the middle. Our Lady is the perfect exemplar of what it is to be a believer. Every moment of her life, she corresponds to God and the spirit of truth. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Behold the slave of the Lord. This aspect of Our Lady being central, she is, from that point of view, she is, in a sense, creature that she is. She's a revelation of the spirit of truth. She is exactly what a human being is supposed to be. Responsive, loving, Loving in the sense of charity, the supernatural theological virtue. And responsive. She is transformed in the present moment. And from that point of view, and St. Maximilian Kolbe writes quite beautifully about the Blessed Virgin, precisely in this context of who is this person. And when she's in the midst of the apostles on the day of Pentecost, it is because amongst all the hundred or so that are there, it is she who responds most perfectly to this presence and this transformation in time of what is the eschaton, the beginning of the eschaton. This is why St. Paul can say we live in the end time. We live in the last days. We are already there. And this is why in the historical spectrum, the whole Western world, wherever the gospel went, was transformed because you began by renewing the spirit and the vision was different, the judgment was different, the actions were different. And that meant that the families were seen differently. We acted differently. We transformed the family from being just simply, in the Roman world, a contractual aspect for inheritance. Men and women weren't faithful to each other by the idea that they were married. Marriage was to make sure someone got the house. And then the fathers would just decide which of the babies that appeared on his doorstep were his, from this woman, his wife, whether they were his children or not. And he would accept them or not accept them. They were to be exposed and put to death, or exposed to die, or to be picked up by someone who's going to enslave them, or to receive them into his home. Our families aren't there yet, but we seem to be moving in that kind of direction. But it was transformed to the idea of one man, one woman, the revelation, male, female. This transformation was done because of the fire of the eschaton, because of Pentecost. It came and transformed the minds of those pagan Romans, made them Catholics, 
And all of a sudden, I see my wife differently. I see my husband differently. I see my children differently. They're not just possessions for inheritance and the continuation of the family. They are individuals called to be saints of God just as, my, as me and my spouse were. This is a transforming vision. And then when the families are transformed, when the communities are transformed to a different vision, to what is justice, what is the proper pursuit of the common good, what really does it mean to be a citizen? This transformation moved outward from the individuals who were transformed interiorly by the coming of the spirit of truth. They are different from the world. As long as we try to live in the world and maybe on occasion go to mass or on occasion say the rosary, we are way off base. We have no understanding of what Pentecost was. We have no understanding of this transformative fire that is given on Pentecost, that is passed from person to person for the last 2,000 years. This is why we celebrate Pentecost. This is the greatest day of the year except for the resurrection. We don't think in that way any longer. We don't think in this manner because we have lost the fire and the light of the spirit of truth in practice. I'm not saying we don't have the faith. I'm not saying we don't believe. But are our lives truly transfigured by the presence of the spirit of truth? That's, that's an examination of conscience for me and for you to do. Are we transformed? Is it true that when the Spirit comes to us, that I come to know by experience, as our, our Lord says in this gospel, you will come to know that I am in my Father and I in you and you in me. How often do we actually feel inflamed by the presence of grace in our lives? And when I say feel, I mean experience. I don't mean feelings. But how often do we see this transformation of our lives? Or are our lives more or less like everybody else around us in Maine? This is a problem because we've lost the vision of what it means to be on the progress towards the end of the world. And for us as Maronites, out of our tradition, out of our Aramaic tradition, is that liturgical acclamation of Maranatha, Morantha, our Lord is coming, ranked right up there with Amen and Hallelujah and all the rest of the things that you know. Sabaot, host, these other terms that are just taken right out of the Aramaic and Hebrew world. But our Lord is coming, Morantha, this idea of living each day, waiting for the end of the world, expecting the end of the world, and in the meantime, through our prayer life and through the divine mysteries, to be transfigured and transformed by grace. This is an extraordinary vision. This is what was cast on the earth on the day of Pentecost, to transform, to transfigure. It's what we receive just as directly as the apostles, what we receive within the divine mysteries within our prayer life, with the reception of grace. And so on this day, we need to have recourse and to come to the Holy Mother of God, she who is mother of the church, perfect believer, handmaid of the Lord, perfect to receive this fire to be transformed. It's hard for us to imagine after the ascension what really were the thoughts of the Blessed Virgin Mary because she would have lived for a number of years afterward in which the world has like nothing of value to hold for her. And yet she continued, she consoled, she guided, she taught herself. The Gospel of St. Luke is her teaching. St. Luke clearly sat down with her and took notes. She was there to teach, to transform, to transfigure, to convey the spirit of truth directly from her son and from the spirit of truth, and from the hidden father, but from a woman whose life in this world, the world had no value for her any longer, other than for those lives that could be drawn out of the valley of tears, drawn out of this valley of darkness, as it mentioned so often in our anaphoras. And yet, by grace and charity, she did this, to bring this faith to others to bring this eschaton, to bring the end of the world to others. It's funny to be thinking that as Catholics, we're supposed to be wishing everyone a happy journey. Here is the end times. Not in panic, 
not in building bunkers, not in hiding, not in becoming obsessed with zombies and undead things and all kinds of bizarre stuff like we do culturally now, but of a vision of hope. We desire what we already possess now. We desire to see in full glory, finally, when our Lord appears to us in his full majesty, with the angels, he says, in the glory of the clouds, the glory of the Father. But this is a reality that we possess today. Do we allow that same kind of hope and that same kind of vision transform what I do today? How I do my barbecue for Memorial Day? How I carry my conversations over that beer? Is it transformed by the gospel? Should be. You can still have fun. You can still celebrate the picnic. You can still celebrate the barbecue, but it only becomes the occasion for the fire of Pentecost to be transferred once again to others, of encouragement and of hope and of vision. And so we have recourse to the mother of God because she was certainly consumed by this vision of light and this vision of hope and this vision of charity, which comes through the faith and has been bequeathed to us from the days of Pentecost. So may she intercede for us, truly transform our hearts and our spirits within that fire and bring us great hope, waiting for the eschaton at one point in the future, but clearly embracing the eschaton that is already ours now by the grace and the love of the unseen Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now receive these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Marin, Saint Jude, and Saint Helicones. Be mindful, O God, of the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Be mindful also of all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. James, the brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we be your, may we be your, excuse me. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And may we have a peace be with us. O oh God, the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. 
Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and unbloody sacrifice. Relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks, O maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and heavenly hosts all sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim. the depths of God, who are holy and almighty, the creator and the good one, who formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise, and we had transgressed your commandments and fell, and did not abandon us, and through the death of my good and merciful Father you instructed us, and through the law you called out to us, and through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image came down, and by the Holy Spirit, became flesh of the holy and ever-Virgin Mary, and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Kurie eleison, wabiyam ha-doktum ha-shodi leim abed chayye, en sabe lachmo mida, kori shonto, ubarachu kodesh, Walk so yab and talmita, caro mara, Sabahula mehene, kulhu, ho no denita, Fahero dia, Dahlo faikun, Wahlo sagi, Metaseu meti her, who so young.
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming, when you shall judge the world with justice, and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded upon the rock of faith, so that the gates of Sheol shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Be mindful of our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember, O oh Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and receive their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John, the forerunner, St. Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, St. James, the brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Be mindful, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, of the faithful departed who have died in the true faith, Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O oh God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O oh God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Father, through you, to you, you be glory forever. 
O God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, O God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation, that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory
In the likeness of tongues of fire he was sent to the upper room, so that by his hovering you may receive happiness and confidence. O Lord, God, Father of mercies, you, we give you thanks. On Pentecost you filled the disciples who were in Jerusalem, awaiting the promise of the Lord with the Holy Spirit. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and from heaven a sound like the rush, and tongues of fire rested upon each one of them. All those who were in Jerusalem were filled with awe, and they glorified you, O giver of all that is good. You sanctified and sent your holy apostles to bring all people to the knowledge of your divinity, baptizing them in your name, O Father, and that of your only Son, and of your Holy Spirit, we worship, thank, and glorify the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. By the power of God, stand up. Behold the day of salvation and consolation when the Father, through the Spirit, poured forth the gift of new languages upon the apostles, bringing the people back from error. Rejoice on this day. And with the apostles, let us adore and praise the Son, so that he may pardon all our faults. We thank and glorify him now and forever. Let us kneel before the Lord upon our, the right knee. Let us kneel and ask the Lord for mercy. With the angels who worship him in fear, we kneel and adore the Father of truth. For he is our maker and our Lord. Before him every knee shall bend and every tongue shall give him praise. Come, let us worship the true Son, sent by the Father of light. Having had mercy upon us, he knelt on our behalf, offered prayer for our sake, and raised us up from our fall from grace. Let us worship the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, and kneel before him. On this day he was sent from the Father, who was not seen, and came to us, resting upon us. He took away our sins, and he clothed us with glory and victory. O Christ our God, may we offer you true and perfect adoration in purity and holiness. At this time when the holy, holy and glorious gift of the paraclete is given to us, we raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, who sent you for our salvation, and to your living spirit of holiness, now and forever. Stand up. This is the day when heaven rejoiced and earth was glad. The cherubim sang and the seraphim cried out, and the apostles exulted for having received the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. On this day, the divine unction, taken away from Adam our father because of his disobedience, has been restored to us. With it, the disciples were anointed, people were forgiven, and all the nations were granted salvation. O Lord, our God, to you be glory now and forever. 
Let us kneel before the Lord upon both knees. Let us kneel and ask the Lord for mercy. Bow your heads and worship God, the Holy Spirit, who spoke through the prophets, made himself understood through interpreters and visionaries, who revealed hidden things and announced the things to come. He descended upon the apostles in the likeness of tongues of fire. Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, may we become pure temples of your glory to serve you. For you perfect and sanctify our souls with your grace. We worship you, O Spirit of Holiness, and the Father and the Son, from whom you proceed, now and forever. By the power of God, stand up. Lift up your hands and bless yourselves with the cross of light. Place in your souls the assistance and salvation that come from the Holy Spirit, whom you have adored in faith with the Father and the Son, now and forever.
you did upon your apostles in the upper room. Teach us as you taught them when you filled them with your divine mysteries and made them able to speak in new tongues and to bring back people from error. Pour forth your Holy Spirit upon your servants who worship you here and everywhere so that they may receive your heavenly gifts and walk on your spiritual path. And now, my beloved, on this blessed 50th day of the Paschal season, we ask our Lord and God to pour forth his spirit of holiness upon you and upon your children upon your homes and upon all your endeavors. May the Spirit fill you with all the blessings of heaven and earth. May he forgive your sins, protect you from your enemies. May he heal the sick, console widows and orphans, and provide for the needs of the poor. And after this life, may he lead you into life eternal forever. Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O
We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope. Through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints, now and forever. So as many of you have already heard of, um, there will be two funerals this week, so there's a bit of a change to the schedule. So there will be the funeral tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Lucas Thomas. And on Friday, the Mass will be at 10 a.m. for the funeral of Cindy Elias on Friday. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen.